How's it going my dudes? Welcome back to another video. By now you should have already done quite a few runs of the current event boss, the Flamewing Serpent. So let's take a look at the event over here. Now, as always, the story is quite bad. It just seems like maybe the seasonal stories are a little bit better, but then again, Christmas was quite terrible. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to see what there is in store. Okay, so if you take a look at the advanced stage, you can drop both of the armaments. Not that the golden one actually matters that much, I think. But if you take a look at advanced, plus you can also get both. So the thing is, as long as you're able to farm the advanced, you're good to go. But of course, farming the advanced plus is more preferable in every aspect. Okay, so let's take a look at item exchange, see what we can exchange for. Um, I've already actually cleared up quite a bit of the shop, so all that I'm really left with is just like extra flame wing stuff. And if you're wondering why there's extra flame wing stuff, right? That's because the more you dismantle, the more weapon cores that you can get, and then the weapon cores you can put it under certain units. Okay, so this is only probably going to be good for new players. It's not going to be so good for players with a very decent team right now because if you have a very strong team, you can farm Golem EX and you can farm Golem EX armaments. Or maybe you can even farm the Labyrinth because the Labyrinth Swords are going to be a lot better than these as weapon cores. So apart from this, uh, there is also going to be a standard mats, right? There's going to be a T1 to T4 mats. And there is also a Staminate Flask, so definitely go get it. There's 25 Staminate Flasks, which is super generous of them. So all that's really left is just EXP and mana. If you're a new player, you can definitely prioritize some of these stuff over here. But for me, maybe if I'm done with all the armaments in general, I'm pretty much done with this place. I don't necessarily need the mana as well, I'm really loaded with mana. You can technically just clear this shop in one single day just by joining all the bells that come around. There are quite a few people on Discord who have already completed the event within maybe like the first 4 hours of the event going live. But then again, this game is a marathon, it's not a rush. So if you take a look at the current Valentine's event, right, I am far from done because I am just taking my own time on this. There is still so much more for me to, to, to farm over here and this is where I'll probably prioritize my stamina from now on. Right, so what else is there in this event? If you go to the missions, there's going to be daily quests, right? So if you do Flaming Serpent on solo three times, you need to do this solo, you can then unlock this coin, which is kind of useless, right? Just one is not really a big deal, but it is a way for you to get extra beats. So that's 10 extra beats per day, as long as you do three of these solo. So do take note that this has to be in solo, you can't do it in co-op. And apart from that, there is also Flaming Serpent, clear multiplayer battles, and as well as dash 10 times. Very standard stuff. And there is a new banner, I've already talked about this banner. Whether you want to pull or not, I leave it to you. But personally for me, let me just drop some wisdom on you guys, okay? So if you are a real free-to-play player, 100% free-to-play, my advice for you is to focus on banners that provide skill gauge units. So I'm talking about banners that include Hanabi maybe, but Hanabi is really over. Banners that include Kohane, banners that include Lakisha, banners that include Half Anniversary Nef Team. These banners would do a lot for you if you are a free to play player because what's very important is having units that actually change up your team synergy, change up your team composition a lot in more than just DPS. So from my experience, units with skill gauges actually change the game a lot for you. Okay, so very well known Shasuzu, very well known Shirano, very well known Sushi. And of course, Murakumo with 50% lead. These units are all very meta because they change the dynamics of your composition. So let's take a look at some of the event runs that I'm doing and what are the teams that I'm bringing and how they fare. Okay, generally this boss is kind of difficult because he lands a lot of those fire pillars that does a lot of damage, especially if you stay stuck in those spots, right? So you can bring uh, a safe team would be a water team, but you can bring a fire team like I am. Uh, fire power flip is generally going to do a lot more damage than your standard water team can but you're going to lose out a little bit on spell ability because you're not going to have Faf unless you want to include a Faf in your team. But generally speaking, you do not have a lot of heals as well, okay? So even if you have no end, right, your heals is still not going to be enough. But you still will be getting some faster runs, which may make up for the fact that you don't have enough heals, right? Because the longer they last in a fight, the more you need to care about your HP. So there you go. These are the Lava Falls or whatever you call it. It does a lot of damage. Don't stay in it for too long. As you can see, I'm really like down a lot of HP right now. So this boss is a little bit interesting in terms of uh, one punning. okay? So I will talk a little bit about how to one pun the boss in uh, probably tomorrow's video. I've already done a couple of runs, but I just want to be more familiar with 
uh, the, the strategy and the reasons why it fails or the reasons why it succeeds. Right, I just want to know the, the facts before I, I drop them on you guys. So as you can see, the boss starts off with two buffs, right? He starts off with an attack buff and he actually has a immunity buff. So you're not able to paralyze him or debuff him with anything unless you get rid of the remaining buff that he has, which is whatever that you're seeing right now. So technically, if you want to go the safer route, you can bring any, right? Any, she can remove one buff and apply a debuff. So you need to remove the first attack buff and then someone else has to remove the second immunity buff then you can follow up with the attack debuff. So you need to have two buff removers at once. If not, you're going to take a little bit more time to just get rid of the buffs. But from my own perspective, uh, you don't have to follow me just because my team is a little bit stronger. So I don't really need to worry too much about my sustainability. I am doing perfectly fine. But if you're a little bit more of a veteran, then you really don't need to get rid of the buffs. It's not so crucial. You can definitely kill the boss without caring too much about the attack buffs and all that good stuff. And this is the part that actually gets pretty insane, man. If you don't control the boss, if you don't break him often enough, He's gonna land something really dangerous and I'll show you in the next run after this. Honestly, I, I can't wait to see this guy in godly status. He is currently only in advanced plus and he packs quite a punch, right? He can definitely nuke you down if you are unbeknownst to his dangers. So I think in godly, he's gonna get quite interesting. All the lava falls are gonna be quite powerful. And he comes back in a rerun in the future, so do take note of that. There's gonna be more new armaments as well, but that will be for another day. So this run took us almost two minutes. That's kind of long, but let's check out uh, probably a water team that I'm gonna bring into this fight. Now using a water team, you're gonna be a little bit more safe because you have Faf. However, if you feel like you know your, your power is lacking a little bit, you can definitely bring in any like I suggested earlier. She's going to be an excellent choice in removing the buffs that the boss has, which means controlling the fact that he has attack buffs and also landing attack debuffs like I've discussed previously. Now this is going to be a little bit boring because you have seen water teams for like maybe the past two weeks or so of just continuously grinding Golem EX. But still this is going to have to be a mandatory video showcasing my team and how it's going to fare against this boss. This fight is going to be a little bit more dicey. You're going to see us getting hammered a lot by the boss. So I guess this is a good place to show you what you can expect if you are not prepared or maybe if we encounter maybe the, god the godly version of it in the future. This could be what would happen to you, right? As you can see, uh, Faf is taking a bit of a hit right now. We are managing to control his HP a little bit, right? Like the same goes for the rest of my allies. You're all green right now, right? So this is like the easy stage. This is the easy part of the boss fight where his HP is still above the lowest threshold. So as you can see, when we hit that little red line over there on his HP bar, that's when he starts to go ape shit and then he drops that. I, I can't remember what that, that skill is called, right? But there is a lot of lava falls all around him and that's where people start to melt, literally melt. So you kind of need to have faff if you're going to go with something safe and slow like this. As you can see, wow, I just walked past the lava fall and I took 500 damage. And it may just be because they are pups, right? But the teams that I see that do the most damage are teams with New Year's Elia. So even if your stats are being carried by Sonya teams, the fact is they are still boosting your DPS and your damage is still damaged onto the boss. And therefore, you're actually helping the run in your own way. So don't feel so bad about using New Year's Elia and don't feel like you need to use Sonya or something like that. Just use, you know, honestly, just use whatever that you want. You can use a fire team. Okay, so as long as you don't grieve, then that's fine. And now as you can see, the boss is down uh, right below the threshold. And you know, you see, he, okay, he's going to die, right? He's so close to death. But here he drops all these stuff. And as you can see, my allies, they are slowly melting. Like, oh, wow. Okay, so now they're all suddenly just gone, right? They're all just, they're, they're gone. <laughs> They, they literally just went for a stroll in the fire, I guess. Uh, but we are still working fine. And as you can see, that was a super scary skill. I have never seen anything like that. That was that was really quite shocking. I thought I was going to lose this run, uh, to be honest. Um, but yeah, see, as long as you can capture him and break him frequently, he's not going to do too much to you. That crazy nuke that he uses, if you don't break him, actually hits the entire map. So it's not very safe. But there you go. That's the end of the run. We solo the boss. Let me know what teams you are bringing into the fight. I would like to know whether are you going off element or are you going strictly water teams. I've been seeing a lot of water teams. That's kind of boring to be honest. Let's go with something else, okay? Because this is advanced plus. This is not godly. You can get creative. That's the end of the event rundown. This has been free to play, by the way. And as always, I will see you in the next video.